ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد as always my respected brothers in islam my respected sisters in islam we begin by praising allah ta'ala with praises and exaltations that only he is worthy of we begin by sending his salawat and his salamat his blessings and his peace upon the last and final messenger muhammad ibn abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam we begin by thanking our brothers here at masjid at tawhid as our brother mentioned and i'm going to correct him just slightly that although this is my uh actually not second my third visit to cardiff uh it is actually my first visit to masjid at tawhid and alhamdulillah being that i've been here twice before and i've seen uh the stages in which our brothers have worked to get the community here the salafis in cardiff to the point at which they are now is a great ni'mah it is a great uh, blessing of allah ta'ala when things happen in front of us at the slow rate at which they happen sometimes we lose sight of the blessing of allah ta'ala just as someone uh, uh, our children when they grow old in front of us we don't notice but if their grandparents come from far away they come and they look they can see the change immediately so it is a good reminder barakallahu feekum from someone who has been here a number of times over the past uh, i believe uh, a decade or so to see the growth of the da'wa may allah ta'ala increase our brothers here may allah ta'ala increase the salafis in every place barakallahu feekum the topic ya ikhwan for this lecture we said was maintaining our homes maintaining our homes upon prophetic guidance maintaining our homes upon prophetic guidance and the reason we said this and we mentioned this that the topic of this daura ilmiya it is maintaining our religion maintaining ourselves in these challenging times and the one who has aql the one who has intellect insight uh they can recognize that as the time passes by as the time passes by the challenges only become greater and greater 
And this should not surprise us. Naam. This, it should not surprise us as indeed the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has informed us of this phenomena in many a hadith. In Hajjatul Wida' the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to the Sahaba, and he's speaking to the Sahaba, he said, فَمَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَرَى اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا those that live a long life amongst you will see much division and differentiation. And here he's speaking to the Sahaba Ridwan Allah Ta'ala alayhim ajma'in. Although the message is also for those that come after them, the first ones he is speaking to is the Sahaba. وَقَدْ وَقَعَ كَمَا أَخْبَرَ نَبِيُّنَا Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as our Prophet Muhammad, he told us, is exactly what happened. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, You will follow the ways of the people that came before you. Shibran, shibran, vira'an, vira'an. Hatta walaw dakhalu juhra dibbin la dakhaltumu. So much so that if they were to enter into a lizard's hole, you would go in behind them into that lizard's hole. وَقَدْ وَقَعَ كَمَا أَخْبَرَ نَبِيُّنَا مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And indeed, as our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, informed us, it is as that which has occurred. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, سَتَفْتَرِقُ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ عَلَى ثَلَاثٍ وَسَبَعِينَ فِرْقَةٍ That this ummah shall divide into 73 sects. 73 sects. وَقَدْ وَقَعَ كَمَا أَخْبَرَ نَبِيُّنَا مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And as he, alayhi salatu wasalam, informed us, is as has taken place in the dunya. And this is indeed a sign and a dalil upon the truthfulness, the truth of the message of Muhammad صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ So when we see this, one of the affairs that we should think of, that it should remind us of, is al-yaqeen. Let's give a surety in the da'wah of al-Islam in the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In that manner, when Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, when his uh, 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 reign, it came and he was known for dhulm, he was known for oppression, uh, uh, he attacked yani Makkah, a portion of the Kaaba was even destroyed during his reign. And he killed many of the Sahaba. When some of the people, they went to Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, uh, was the khadim of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the khadim, yani the, uh, uh, the servant of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was of a very young age when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to al Madina and his mother uh, 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 put him in the service of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. And he lived a long life. And he lived into almost 90 years after the hijrah, if not more than that. So he lived a very long life. So some of the people, they came complaining. Complaining to him. And he said, لا يأتي زمان إلا والذي بعده شر منه سمعته من نبيكم He advised them, for he said, اصبروا اصبروا Be patient فإنه لا يأتي زمان For indeed there is not a time that comes إلا والذي بعده شر منه Except that the time that comes after it is worse than it. Except that the time that comes after it is worse than it. سَمِعْتُهُ مِنْ نَبِيِّكُمْ I heard this statement from your Prophet. I heard this statement from your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, the challenging times, they are here, rather they were here in the times of the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'een. It was not long after the death of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, except that the fitan began to occur. 
even in the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu even though many of the fiqh uh, 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 balla, the uh, stray groups they appeared in the latter times as uh, uh, the, the foreigners began to enter into Islam and they began their be, uh, uh, became with their afkar uh, uh, with, their, uh, 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 with their thoughts and with their ideas from their previous religions but there was fitan that occurred in the time of Abu Bakr in the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and it should be mentioned that Yani we find that all of them, all of them after Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu were murdered, they were killed. And other than Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu who died a natural death, the rest of them, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Uthman ibn Affan and Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, all of them, they were killed. So the fitan were there. So we should not lose sight. We find this amongst many of the people, they lose sight. They lose hope. That if this is the condition of the Muslims, then يعني, they put shak where? They put shak in Islam itself. They put shak in Islam itself. You go and you tell someone to be mutadayyin, to pray, to, you tell the women to cover. They say, well, look at me. يعني, I'm better than this person. This person prays, that person covers. They do this, they do that. What does that have to do with the price of dates? يعني, you pray and be better than them. So their shak then is placed in the deen. And this is not allowed, ya ikhwan. When we see these affairs, it should not cause us doubt. It should not cause us grief. But rather, it should increase us in yaqeen, in Allah Ta'ala. And then it should increase us in tawakkul. In tawakkul, in our dependence upon Allah Ta'ala. And then it should return us back. It should return us back to the book of Allah, the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because indeed, the answer, the answer to all of our problems, is in the book of Allah, in the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whether we understand it or not. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُكْرِهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ You may dislike something, it's good for you. You may love something, it's bad for you. You don't know, Allah knows. So it is an obligation upon us to keep this in mind. And to ponder over this, that when we find these uh, uh, tests, these trials, these tribulations that come our way, do not leave the solution to what you yourself desire, what you yourself think is the solution, but rather return it back to the kitab of Allah, return it back to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and in that you will find success. In that, you will find success. But we mention here our homes. That is the topic, our homes. And our homes indeed are from the greatest blessings of Allah Ta'ala. That firstly, Allah Ta'ala, He created for us the earth. Allah Ta'ala, He says, He is the one who laid out the earth for you. Right? And made the mountains upon it as pegs. In this fashion, Allah Ta'ala created the earth in a manner that it can be lived upon. That we can reside upon it. Look at the earth. Look at the earth. Rather coming here, we notice it more than we do maybe in the States with the, you know, the rolling rivers and the mountains and the hills. All of this is a dalil That Allah Ta'ala created the earth in a manner that we can benefit from it and made in it paths and roads so that we may travel and then gave to us animals that we benefit from and taught us skills the making of ships and boats in those times and in the latter times even other knowledge the knowledge of engineering what has come about from innovation in the affairs of the dunya which is a benefit all of this is because Allah Ta'ala created this earth and provided everything we needed for our existence upon this earth. And from those provisions is that Allah Ta'ala 
has made this earth a second, an abode, somewhere to live. Be it for those that are alive or those that are dead. Within this earth, we bury our dead. And upon this earth, we build our homes. And this is from indeed the greatest blessings of Allah Ta'ala. In Surah An-Nahl, Allah Ta'ala, He says, Wallahu ja'ala lakum min buyutikum sakana. Wallahu ja'ala lakum min buyutikum sakanan. That Allah Ta'ala has made for you from your homes a place to live, sakanan. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ جُلُودِ, ال... من جلود الْأَنْعَامِ بُيُوتَا And also from the skins of the animals, Allah Ta'ala has given you homes. And here, the intent here is the tents that are used in travel. As Allah Ta'ala, He says, تَسْتَخِفُّونَهَا يَوْمَ فَعْنِكُمْ وَيَوْمَ إِقَامَتِكُمْ so not only does Allah Ta'ala give us homes when we are residing, when we are stationary in one place, but Allah Jalla wa Ala has also blessed us with homes when we are traveling by way of these tents that are light. Allah Ta'ala says, تَسْتَخِفُّونَهَا yani They're light in weight. يَوْمَ فَعْنِكُمْ وَيَوْمَ إِقَامَتِكُمْ The days that you are traveling, the days that you are stationary. During that travel, you have homes. Homes? are a necessity of life. They are a protection. Be it when you are traveling, be it when you are not traveling. They are a protection from the forces of nature. When it is raining, when it is cold, uh, when it is hot, these homes, they are a sense of a means of security for us. And in that fashion, did Allah Ta'ala create them? So that they may be a security for us. وَمِنْ أَصْوَافِهَا وَأَوْبَارِهَا وَأَشْعَارِهَا آثَاثًا وَمَتَاعًا إِلَى حِينَ And then from these very animals, from the wool of these animals, from the fur of these animals, from the hair of these animals, Allah Ta'ala has given us a means of enjoyment, a means of provision. A means of provisions until an appointed time. So in this, as Allah Ta'ala, He reminds us of the blessings of Allah Ta'ala continuously. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ This was the statement of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam to Bani Israel. He said to them, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ Because remember, Bani Israel were blessed. Allah Ta'ala says to them, اُذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Remember the blessing of Allah upon you over and over again in the Quran. Remember, Allah Ta'ala blessed you. So Allah Ta'ala, so Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he's reminding them now. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ And when your Lord, he announced, لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ If you are indeed thankful, لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٌ If you are thankful, if you are thankful for my blessings, I will increase you. But if you are unthankful, if you are unthankful, inna azabi la shadid. Indeed, my punishment is severe. And on that day, ya ikhwan, we will be reminded. In some of the hadith, it's mentioned. Fa'arrafahum ni'amahu. Allah Ta'ala arrafahum. He will. Tell them of the blessings that they had. And then ask them, what did you do with them? So our homes indeed are a blessing of Allah Ta'ala. And they are a means of protection. They are a means of protection as it relates or as it is concerning the dunya, as we said. The you know, forces of nature. The cold, the wind, the snow, uh, the heat, all of this, the sun. But they are also a means of protection from fitan, from trials and tribulations. From trials and from tribulations. 
concerning our deen. Kama yuqal, salamatul rajuli min al fitani an yalzima baytahu. Salamatul rajul min al fitan an yalzima baytahu. That the safety of the man from trials and tribulations is what? An yalzima baytahu. Is that an yalzima baytahu that he should remain in his house? Because in our homes, the man of the house, he is the Rabb of that house. He's the Lord of the house. He can control what happens within the boundaries of his home. He has the choice of whom he marries, how he maintains his wife and his family, and what he does in his home. Who enters his home? What enters his home? What leaves his home? How much enters his home? All of this, Ya Ikhwan, Allah Ta'ala has given us power over it. This is why in the hadith, in the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and he said, مَن يَرَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ The one who amongst you sees an evil, let him change it with his hand. The scholars, they mention that from the application of this is where the man in his house, the woman in her house. This is from the application of this hadith. Salamatul rajul min al fitani an yalzima bayta. This is how a person attains safety by sticking to his house. So that when we remain in our homes, We can maintain them. We can maintain them. And this also we will be questioned regarding. It is mentioned in Sunan At-Tirmadhi and created to be Hassan by a Shaykh Nasir al-Din al-Albani, Allahu yarhamuhu, the Prophet of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, Allahu sa'ilu, Allahu sa'ilu kulli ra'in amma star'ahu. That Allah Ta'ala will ask, Sa'ilu kulli ra'in amma star'ahu. Every shepherd will be asked regarding Allah Ta'ala, regarding what? Amma star'ahu. What he was responsible for. What he was responsible for. Ahafidha dhalika am bayyaah. Did he protect it? Am bayyaahu. Or did he waste it? Allahu Akbar. Ahafidahu am bayyahu. Hatta yusal al rajul an ahli bayti. So much so that the man is going to be asked regarding the people in his house. You had a wife. What did you do with her? How did you teach her? How did you spend your time with her? You had children. How did you interact with them? What did you do with them? How did you maintain their religion? How did you maintain their deen? So in this fashion we understand that the protection of the home, Ya Ikhwan, is muhim, it is important. And that the Prophet of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said in a hadith collected by Al Imam Muslim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that one day the Prophet of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, he stood up on some of the high homes, buildings in Al Madina, and he said to the Sahaba, Hal tarawna ma ara? Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Inni ara al fitan taqa'u khilal buyutikum mawaqi al qafri. Inni ara al fitan 
تقعوا خلال بيوتكم مواقع القطر I see the trials and tribulations falling upon your homes like rain like when it rains and when it rains there's nothing which is safe it rains upon everything the prophet of allah والسلام, he said i see inni ara al fitan taqa'u khalala khilala buyutikum upon your homes mawaqi al qatri like raindrops in some other narrations that the fitan they will cover you they will shade you like the shading of a cloud meaning these fitan if we are not careful will what enter into our homes ya ikhwan enter into our homes and billahi alaykum look look at your homes and the devices that are within our homes wa nas'alullaha al-'afiyata wa salamata min kulli sharr ya sallallahu ta'ala for safety from all that which is evil wa tawfiq li kulli ma yuhibbuhu wa yardah and success in everything Allah Ta'ala loves and He's pleased with that these fitan have now entered into our homes with our permission with our permission so these affairs are to occur and the obligation upon us as this is a two-part talk we're going to divide it into two parts. The first part is in totality. What is the obligation upon the people of a home? And how to maintain an Islamic environment in our homes? And the second part is going to be concerning the mu'amalat. the dealings, interactions of the people in the home. Husband with wife, the wife with the husband, parents with the children, children with the parents, siblings and siblings, brothers and sisters. That will be the second part. But as for today, then our speech is regarding maintaining an Islamic environment in our homes. And how is it that we accomplish that. How is it that we accomplish that? And here the affair, it comes down to the statement of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. He says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe. O you who believe, Qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْهِجَارَةِ عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاظٌ شِدَادٌ لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ Allah Ta'ala, He begins this ayah by saying, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O oh, you who believe Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu he explains regarding these words Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu O you who believe that when we hear these words Allah ta'ala is summoning us by one of our characteristics and that is the characteristic of iman so then whatever comes after that is a requirement of that iman meaning what? If you have iman, in kuntum tu'minuna billahi, if you believe in Allah Ta'ala, fa'alaykum bihad al amal, then this is what is upon you. And in this ayah, what is upon you? Qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Save your own families. Save yourselves and your families from the fire. 
A fire whose fuel is men and stone. Upon it are strong and severe angels. Aliha malaikatun ghilavun shidadun la ya'asun Allah ma amarahum. La ya'asun Allah ma amarahum. They don't disobey Allah. Wa yaf'alun ma yu'marun. They do what Allah Ta'ala has ordered them to do. What Allah Ta'ala has ordered them to do. The Mufassirun, if you go to any of the Tafasir, you'll find that all of the Kalam on what the people of Tafsir have said, it revolves around two affairs. At-ta'deeb wa ta'aleem. Or at-ta'aleem wa ta'deeb. Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said regarding this ayah, يعني علموهم وأدبوهم علموهم وأدبوهم Teach them وأدبوهم وأدبوهم And here وأدبوهم we don't just want to say reprimand them Right? Because it's not just reprimanding them but rather it is both الأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر. Both of them are included in this التأديب. And this is where we want to begin. As simple as this is. التعليم والأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر. In التعليم الإمام ابن قيم رحمة الله تعالى he divides knowledge into three different levels. Into three different affairs, different from different from what we find, for example, in the books of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah taala, in wording, but in meaning, it's all similar. It's all the same. He says the first level of knowledge is al ilmu billahi wa asmaihi wa sifatihi wa afali. His knowledge of Allah Ta'ala, of His names, of His attributes, and of His actions. Secondly, is knowledge of Al-Halal Wal-Haram. What is Halal and what is Haram? Al-Awamir wal nawahi What does Allah Ta'ala order us with? What does Allah Ta'ala forbid us from. And the third knowledge is regarding al-hisab wal-jaza. The reckoning and the compensation of our actions. These are the three levels of knowledge that al-imamu ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions. And as we know, knowledge is always paired with action. The ahadith regarding knowledge, the ayat regarding knowledge are plentiful. هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Are those that know equal to those that do not know? إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلِمَاءِ Indeed, it is the people of knowledge that are fearful of Allah. From the ahadith, مَنْ سَلَكَ تَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ تَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ The one who follows a path seeking knowledge, Allah Ta'ala makes his path easy to al-jannah. All of these are known. But the ayat I wanted to mention are the ayat from Surah Al-Ra'd. As they combine knowledge and the fruits of knowledge. And it is a good example of the changes that occur when knowledge is uh, when knowledge is established in our homes. As you put a seed in the ground, right? Then you water it, you make sure it's getting sunlight, you take care of it, protect it from the different beasts and different creatures that may come and take from its fruit. 
This is what knowledge is like in our homes. Right? And if anyone knows those that maintain gardens, those that maintain farms, the amount of work that goes into something like that. Allah Ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Ra'ad, أَفَمَنْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ الْحَقِّ كَمَنْ هُوَ أَعْمَى إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ يُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَنْقُضُونَ الْمِثَاقِ Allah Ta'ala, He says, are those that know that what was revealed upon you from your Lord is the truth. Are they like those that are blind? كَمَنْ هُوَ أَعْمَى إِنَّ مَا يَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, it is the people of intellect that will ponder over this, that will think about this. And there's no doubt, there's no doubt that this questioning is to remind us that sahibul ilm, ahlul ilm, the people of knowledge, are not like the people of ignorance. Rather, there's a difference between them. And then the difference, Allah Ta'ala mentions the characteristics of the people of knowledge. So He says, الَّذِينَ يُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَنْقُضُونَ الْمِيثَاقِ There are those that complete the covenant of Allah and they do not break their promises. وَلَا يَنْقُضُونَ الْمِيثَاقِ Their covenants with the people, their promises, their trusts. They don't break them. So here, there is a maintaining of firstly and foremostly the covenant of Allah Ta'ala. Naam. So it is that covenant that is mentioned in the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ya Mu'adh tadri ma haqqu Allahi ala al-ibadi wa ma haqqu al-ibadi ala Allah. O Mu'adh, do you know what is the right of Allah upon his servants and what is the right of his servants upon Allah ta'ala? So it is the people of knowledge that maintain that covenant, that maintain that right of Allah jalla wa ala. Al-Hafidh. Uh, uh, Hafid al-Hakami rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned in uh, uh, in one of his poems Sulam al-Wusul he said وَأَخْرَجَ uh, uh, وَأَخْرَجَ فِيمَا قَدْ مَضَى مِنْ ظَهْرِ آدَمَ ذُرِّيَتَهُ كَذَّرِّ وَأَخَذَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِثَاقَ أَنَّهُ لَا رَبَّ مَعْبُودٌ بِحَقٍّ غَيْرَهُ he says that indeed when Allah Ta'ala took أَخْرَجَ فِي مَا قَدْ مَضَى مِنْ ظَهْرِ آدَمَ ذُرِّيَتَهُ كَذَّرِّ That when he took the lineage of Adam from the back of Adam alayhi salatu was salam and Allah Ta'ala he mentions this in the Quran himself in Surah Al-A'raf he says وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Alastu bi rabbikum. Alastu bi rabbikum. When your Lord took from the children of Adam from their backs, their lineages, and He made them bear witness, wa ashhadahum ala amfusihim alastu bi rabbikum, and He made them bear witness against themselves. Am I not your Lord? Qalu bala shahidna. And they said, Yes, we bear witness. Yes, we bear witness that you are our Lord. Antaqulu yom al qiyamati. إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ Lest that you should say on Yom Al-Qiyamah, we didn't know. We didn't know. So that covenant, the people of knowledge, they are the ones that maintain that covenant. And they maintain their promises and their trusts with the people. الَّذِينَ يُوفُونَ بِأَحْدِ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَنْقُضُونَ الْمِثَاقِ وَالَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلُ Then, they are those that maintain those relationships that Allah Ta'ala has ordered to be maintained. وَالَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلَ They maintain them. 
And Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that not only do they maintain them, but they maintain all of the orders of Allah ta'ala. Allah ta'ala orders them with the salah, they maintain their salah. Allah ta'ala orders them with the zakah, they maintain their zakah. Allah ta'ala orders them with sidq, they maintain their truthfulness. Allah ta'ala, he orders them with trust, they maintain that. Anything. وَالَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلَ they do what Allah Ta'ala has ordered them to do. فَهَذَا هُوَ فِعْلُ الطَّاعَاتِ This is doing the acts of obedience. And then, وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ وَيَخَافُونَ سُوءَ الْهِسَابِ And along with that, they fear Allah Ta'ala. They fear an evil reckoning in the hereafter. Whose characteristics are these? Ahlul ilm, people of knowledge. And now this is where you come from. What? Tark. Leaving off what Allah Ta'ala and His Prophet have forbidden us from. Why? وَيَخَافُونَ رَبَّهُمْ وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ وَيَخَافُونَ سُوءَ الْحِسَابِ They are fearful of Allah. They are fearful of the hereafter. These affairs are from the fruits of knowledge. They are from the fruits of knowledge. What? You complete the covenant of Allah. You complete the covenant, the promises between you and the people. You do what Allah Ta'ala has ordered you to do. You refrain from disobedience because you fear Allah. You fear the punishment upon that day. All of this is from the fruits of knowledge. Then, وَالَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا ابْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِمْ They are the people of patience. They are the people of patience. And we'll come to this tomorrow. Because there is a maqam azim and a great need in our homes for patience. For patience. The husband with the wife. The wife with the husband, the parents with the children, the children with the parents, ya ikhwan, wherever we go, we find this to be an issue. That people can be patient with everyone outside of their homes, but they can't be patient with those that are within their own home. So we'll mention this tomorrow. وَالَّذِينَ sabaru, They are patient. إِبْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِمْ But why are they patient? They are patient because they know that my reward is with Allah Ta'ala. Ibtigha'a wajhi rabbihim. Wa aqamu salata. They established a salah. Wa anfaqu mimma razaqanahum sirran wa alaniyatan. We'll mention these quickly. There was more from, from tafsil, but because of time. They established a salah. Wa yuqimuna salata. Huh? And then they give from what we have given them, but in what manner? Sirran wa alaniyatan. Hiddenly and openly. Right? Hiddenly and openly. And there is a point here that in this manner, there is benefit for us and there is benefit for the people. When we give sirran with us knowing, no one else knowing, there's benefit in that because we maintain our ikhlas. وَعَلَانِيَةً And when we give it openly, it is an enticement for others. دَعَى إِلَى الْهُدَى Right? Those that call to guidance, فَلَهُ أَجْرُهَا وَأَجْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا لَا يَنْقُصُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أُجُورِهِمْ شَيْئًا You have the reward of what you did and the reward of those that followed you. And the reward of those that followed you. Not taking away from the reward of them. Then, وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةِ the last characteristic, the last characteristic that is mentioned, وَيَدْرَؤُونَ وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةَ Someone does bad to them, they defend themselves with good. Someone harms them, they defend themselves with good. Right? The mithal of that in what's mashur, it's known, 
when the Prophet of Allah he was sitting with Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and some of the Jews they passed by him saying what? Assalamu alaykum right? instead of saying Assalamu alaykum they said Assalamu alaykum death be upon you so Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she heard this and she became angry so she said Assalamu alaykum al-la'na right? death upon you and the curse upon you so the Prophet of Allah والسلام, he said to her Mahlan ya Aisha Calm down Aisha Aisha said Ya Rasulullah Amma sami'ta maqalu Messenger of Allah You didn't hear what they said? He said Assalamu alaykum She said And he said Didn't you hear what I said? Wa alaykum You didn't hear what I said? I just said And on you Wa yadra'una bil hasanati as-sayyi'ata Someone looks at you in a certain manner you smile back at them right someone makes dua against you you make dua for them this is the sunnah this is the asal this is the asal right and not that there's not a place where a person must be reprimanded in a certain manner but the asal is this right that this is the manner in which we وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةَ These are the characteristics of who? Ahlul ilm They complete the covenant of Allah They keep their promises with the people They maintain their relationships with their relatives They do what Allah Ta'ala has ordered them to do They remain in a state of fear of Allah Ta'ala They fear what their reckoning will be in the hereafter they are patient, seeking reward from Allah Ta'ala. They pray, they give from their wealth openly and hiddenly. They hide it and they give it openly. Someone does bad towards them, they do good towards them. Then what does Allah Ta'ala say? Lahum For them is the good ending. Ahlul ilmi wal amal. In these ayat, you have knowledge mentioned and then the fruits of that knowledge. Not just knowledge. Not just knowledge, the one just sits and reads book after book after book after book, but you don't see ilm upon them. Ilm is an action. Ilm is not sought so that we have memorized that fulan and fulan and fulan, but you can't act upon what you know. It's the action. Then Allah Ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ For them, is the good ending is for them. What's their ending? Jannatun adni yadkhulunaha wa man salaha min abaihim wa azwajihim afwan wa man salaha min abaihim wa azwajihim wa dhuriyatihim ulaika lahum uqbaddar For them are gardens of eternal bliss. For them, their parents, their spouses, and their children. But who? Who from amongst them? Who from amongst them? Man salaha minhum. Those that are righteous. Right? Because there's no entering into Jannah. I'm related. I'm with him. There's none of that on Yom Al-Qiyamah. There's none of that. Right? That I get into Jannah, why? I know him. No, there's none of that. The Prophet of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said to the kuffar, uh, 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 to his family, Ya ma'ashara Quraysh, ishtaru anfusakum min al-nar, inni la ughni ankum min Allahi shay'ah. He said, O oh, people of Quraysh, ransom yourselves from the fire. I don't own anything with Allah for you. Then he said, Abbas, Ya Abbas, and Abdul Muttalib, Save yourselves from the fire. I don't own anything with Allah for you. Then he said, Ya Fatima bint Muhammad, ransom yourself from the fire. From my money, ask me for what you want. 
Ask me for what you want from my money. But in front of Allah, I have nothing for you. So enter, yes, they will enter into Jannah. And those that were upon righteousness from their parents, from their spouses, from their children. And then the angels will enter in upon them from every door. Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. What will they say? Salamun alaykum. Peace be upon you. Why? Bima sabartum. Because of your patience. Fani'ma uqbaddar. How good is that ending? So here there are two affairs, and we'll mention some affairs in passing specific to the educating of our families, specific to ordering them with good and forbidding them from evil. And from that, ya ikhwan, is the bab which is found in the sahih of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala. And it is titled, Bab Ta'aleem al-Rajuli Amatahu wa Ahlahu. It's a chapter. The chapter of a man teaching his slave girl Teaching his family and his slave girl, Afwan. And here he mentions the hadith in which it is said, Rajulun kana indahu ama fa addabaha fa ahsana ta'dibaha wa allamaha fa ahsana ta'limaha thumma a'taqaha fa tazawajaha fa lahu ajran. He said, the man that has a slave girl, فَأَدَّبَهَا فَأَحْسَنَ تَأْدِيبَهَا Right? He gives her adab. He teaches her. Yani he corrects her ways. He corrects her ways. In a manner that, yani تَأْدِيب, if we were to give yani an example or a metaphor, where you yani hold someone by the shoulders. Right? And when they try to turn the wrong way, you turn them back the right way. And when they're going the right way, you aid them. This is ta'deeb. This is how we do uh, 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 ta'deeb of someone. Right? Addabaha fa ahsana ta'deebaha. Wa allamaha fa ahsana ta'leemaha. He teaches her. Wa ahsana ta'leemaha. And then he does a good job in teaching her. And then he frees her. And he marries her. For him is two rewards. And this goes back. This goes back to the... And there's a number of ahadith. Man da'a ila al-huda falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha la yanqusu thalika min ujurihim shay'a The one who calls to guidance. Na'am. Then for him is the reward of it and the reward of those that act upon it. In another hadith or in other wording, man sanna fil islami sunnatan hasana falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha. The one who brings in Islam a good sunnah, yani he revives a sunnah. And this it was said, ya ikhwan, when the Prophet of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, he asked the people uh, one day to give. He asked the people to give. And I, I believe it was because the people came that were stricken by, by poverty. And he saw them and it saddened him when he saw them. I mean, they had their, their swords were around their necks, their clothing and he was limited, they didn't have any shoes on. It saddened him when he saw that. So he asked the people to give. So the people came. And a person gave and a gave and gave and gave until someone came and gave clothing, someone came, gave gold, someone gave food, someone gave. And when he saw this, and he, looking at each other, right? In the very famous qissa between Umar radiallahu ta'ala an and Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an, right? They used to compete. So when the Prophet of Allah wasalam, asked for them to come and give, right? Umar radiallahu ta'ala an said, today, I'm going to beat him today, right? So he went home and he got his sadaqah and he brought it to the Prophet and Abu Bakr. He went home, he got his sadaqah and he brought it to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And when the Prophet saw Umar ta'ala anhu, he said, what did you leave in your house? He said, I left half. Half of everything I came and I brought and I gave. And then he asked Abu Bakr 
رضي الله تعالى عنه الصديق and Abu Bakr he said I left Allah and his messenger in my house يعني I brought everything it was on that day Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that day I knew I could never beat that man that was it right so يعني تأديب to follow their example right so all of this it is mentioned so لا شك ولا ريب the one who does this if they have a slave girl right teach them show them the right way ثم أعتقها free them فتزوجها and then you marry them right فله أجران for them is two rewards الحافظ ابن حجر الإسقلاني he says regarding this hadith in Fatul Bari he says even though the hadith itself it mentions the slave girl right and in the hadith is a beautiful example of yani when when the orientalists and they come and they bring this thing of look you have slavery in islam look you know it's such a backwards religion you have slavery in islam there's a beautiful article by a sheikh badiuddin uh, allah yarhamu in which he he does rad upon those who brings this and he says that in islam yes yes we have slavery in islam naam but you in the west you have interest Right? And the asal of slavery is your interest. Right? So today you have slavery, but you don't call it slavery. And in the Muslim world, there's no slavery. So who is better and who is worse? Right? So Al-Hafid ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, Allah yarhamuhu, he mentioned, he said, even though the hadith it mentions the slave girl, there's no doubt that the one that you are already married to has more right to these actions than the one that you're not even married to right now. And our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was, uh, uh, it was mentioned that in this manner he would teach his wives. And we'll end with these. It's mentioned in the Sahih of Imam Muslim that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي من الليل. He would at times stand up to pray at night. فإذا أُتِرَ قَالَ قُومِ يَا عَائِشَ. So when it came time to pray al-witr, and he's praying by himself, right? Praying by himself. But when it came time to pray witr, he قُومِ قُومِ يَا عَائِشَ. Stand up, Aisha. Stand up with me. قومي فأوتي لي عائشة and pray with her with me O عائشة in this manner he would wake her up it's mentioned on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه that the Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said this hadith is collected by in the Sunan of Abi Dawood and graded to be Hassan by Sheikh Nasir al-Din al-Albani he said رحم الله رجلا قام من الليل فصلى فأيقظ امرأته فإن أبت نضح في وجهها ما He said may the mercy of Allah Ta'ala be upon that man who stands up at night فصلى and he prays فأيقظ امرأته فإن أبت نضح على وجهها ما and then he wakes up his wife wake up wake up Kamul Layl, wake up. فَإِنْ أَبَتْ فَإِنْ أَبَتْ And if she turns away, she doesn't want to get up. نَضَحَ عَلَى وَجْهِهَا مَا He puts water on her face. Water, yani. Water, not water. Right? Yani, a little bit of water. Right? And a person to stop there. And then the Prophet of Allah, alayhi salatu wa salam, he continued. And he said, رحم الله امرأة قامت فصلت فأيقظت فأيقظ نعم فأيقظ زوجها فإن أبا فأيقظت عفوا زوجها فإن أبا نضحت على وجههما And then he said, and the woman who stands up to pray قيام الليل wakes up her husband wake up pray if he doesn't she puts water on her face 
So this affair of al-amr bil ma'roof wa nahi al munkar ya ikhwan is a two-way road. And I advise this to both the men and the women. Both the men and the women. The maintaining of the house takes two. The maintaining of the house, it takes two. And each of them ordering not only themselves and their spouses, but the children with khair, with what is good and prohibiting them from evil. And that was the manner of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In this manner you find our homes do not become empty of the deen of Allah Ta'ala. They do not become empty, even from the salah. Even from the salah. The Prophet of Allah والسلام, he would pray. Some in the masjid, some at home. So it is not that our deen is for the masajid, but our deen should be in our homes firstly and foremostly. The Prophet of Allah he said, مَثَلُ الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي يُذْكَرَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ وَالْبَيْتُ الَّذِي لَا يُذْكَرَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ He said, the, the likeness of the house in which Allah Ta'ala is mentioned and the house in which Allah is not mentioned, the difference between the two is like the difference between that which is a, 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 a life and death. That is the difference. So in this manner, ya ikhwan, wa akhawat, Allah yubarik fikum. And again, the topic is deep. Na'am. And the topic can be spoken about for days, if not months and years. And everything enters into it. But in a small, uh, uh, concise manner, these are some of the advices uh, that we have in maintaining our homes. May Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الله يبارك فيكم. I see there's some questions up here inshallah ta'ala. Uh, I am sure our brothers will love when Sheikh Hassan al-Sumali comes and answers them inshallah ta'ala. هذا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه أجمعين.